Today, we are once again talking about loaded boxes out at tops because Michael Rubin has come out and said something pretty, you know, interesting in my opinion, pretty cool in that they've apparently, tops and Fanatics have apparently had an external party come in and complete an audit over their process, which obviously for the regulars on the channel will know that this piques my interest quite a lot considering it is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, before we jump into Michael's comments specifically, I want to quickly remind everyone that this is just my opinion. It doesn't really you know, represent the opinion of my employer or anything like that. We're just going to talk through some of his comments because I think there's a little bit to unpack here around, well, what kind of audit was actually done? And there's a piece here that I think is very important and pretty cool, you know, for the industry that they can take one step further and do some pretty amazing stuff. Now, this was first brought to my attention via Neo Cards and Comics, who you can sort of see on screen right now. Please do check it out. Give him a follow and a like if you're not already doing that. But it's a, it's a very interesting one. Now, just quickly, you know, some people thought I was going after Neo in my last video about repacks. That was 100% not the case. It, it was just a mini misspeak on my part. If you go out and check my last video, you'll see exactly what I meant with in my pinned comment. So I'll play this now and then share my thoughts in a second. Because the breakers now have a, you know, important, you know, and, and by the way, it's, it's, it's great marketing. So, you know, for us, um, we understand the math of you take like, you know, a big breaker and if one guy's doing 15% of the business, they're going to get 15% of the cards. So what we did, people always question the integrity yeah. of what we do. So this year for the first time, we said, hey, let's take our auditor. I think we hired Deloitte and Touche. It wasn't Deloitte and Touche. One of the others, we're going to hire you. I think it is Deloitte and Touche. We're going to hire you. We're going to pay you to audit all the results. The same way the NBA audits their draft lottery. Oh, that's cool. And we did that this year. Okay. Now we haven't really broadcasted, but we started doing that this past year. We now have the Lloyd Touche coming in, auditing everything to make sure that everything is random as it's advertised. So that was a great thing for us to do. We just added a cost for the authenticity of the hobby. Does everyone know we did that? No. Did we make a big deal out of it? No. But is it important to do things like that? Absolutely. I, I always say, anytime someone has a right, we should listen to it, figure out whether they're right or wrong. If they're right, we should act on it. If they're wrong, we should still hear their perspective. So as you can see, there's some pretty cool comments from Michael Rubin about ways they're listening to us as collectors and also ways they're looking to elevate the integrity and transparency of not only their business, but the industry as a whole, because it's really cool that they've listened to people and gone ahead and done something like this. And they've not just gone ahead and done a random audit, they've gone ahead and hired someone like Deloitte, which is a big four audit firm, one of the most prestigious organizations you know, within that industry, which is a huge tick of approval for what they've basically gone ahead and done. But there's a few things we need to sort of understand now, because there's a lot more questions off the back of this around you know, what kind of audit was actually done because there are many different types of audits and all those different types of audits have different levels of work that go into them, have different levels of scope and all that sort of stuff. There are things like reviews, limited assurance, reasonable assurance, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to bore you guys, but each of those drastically change the amount of work and then also the amount of comfort that you can rely upon when it comes to their opinion. So I really hope that, you know, fanatics and tops make this information public. So we as, you know, enthusiasts, as collectors, as participants within this hobby, can read and interpret what was actually done because um, we don't really have any clarity now as to what they've signed off on. Now, Michael sort of mentions within that clip, they've essentially signed off on the odds and the randomness and all that kind of thing. But, you know, a lot of the questions will come to things like I've asked in other videos around, well, what happens once the packaging is done? Because whilst it might be random, can somebody track that internally and then funnel that box to somebody, right? Does their, you know, audit cover that? Right? Because it probably should, because that's where the key question asks. But if their you know, audit is simply doing with you know, the randomization of cards into packs, is that sufficient to say loaded boxes are not possible? Now, I'm keen to sort of see what was done, like I said, because we don't really know. But something like this is a huge uplift for the hobby, in my opinion. And it's something I've been talking to, like I said, for many years now, because so many of these businesses sort of take the piss with what it is they're doing, right? They have terrible risk appetites, and it's very clear to make that statement based on all the mistakes that we're seeing, but we're finally getting now a business sort of seeing all this pushback within the industry and saying, well, we're not doing this, we're comfortable we're not doing this, so we've gone ahead and told our auditor to expand their services and look into this. Now, like I said, I wanna understand a bit further, but I'm keen to sort of hear what you guys have to say. I just think this is a pretty cool thing for the industry, as long as they take that one step further, make it transparent, make it publicly available, and also hopefully increase the scope or not increase the scope, but hopefully their scope has encompassed sort of the end-to-end -end process because sort of like I said, randomizers going into packs and things like that is all well and good and that supports your odds. But what does your internal process look like once things are packaged and ready to be shipped out? 
could somebody, you know, manipulate that process to send something to somewhere else, right? And that's where the questions need to be answered. And that's sort of what we need to understand, you know, a little bit further. But on face value, like I said, it's incredibly fantastic and it's a huge, a huge win for the hobby. And I hope it sort of has a trickle effect, if that's the word, into other areas, into the graders, into, you know, you know, Panini as well, into essentially anybody and everybody that operates as a business within this industry to sort of uplift their levels too. Because like I said, these guys have gotten away with doing terrible things for a long period of time and they've been allowed to do it, right? Because people don't care. People don't vote with their wallets. Now, the other thing I'll quickly say on this, I think part of the reason why we've probably seen Michael come out and do this is because, or Fanatics, I should say, come out and do this, is because Fanatics, by all media reports and things like that, are still intending to go ahead with their IPO. They're still intending to get listed on the stock exchange. And, you know, having a control environment, and again, for those of you that are not auditors and not accountants or don't work in finance, a control, control environment essentially is, you know, all the policies and procedures that a business has in place to make sure that mistakes don't happen, right? And that can either be, you know, financially or even mistakes on the job, right? If you're a builder, all the things that you have in place from an OH&S perspective or a work health safety perspective, so nobody dies, right? The things you have in place to stop that sort of stuff from happening. Now, back to fanatics, right? When you want to get listed and you want to go on the stock exchange, you need to have a very strong control environment. And something like this might be the first step in them doing that to get ready for when that thing actually goes ahead and gets listed. Now, that might just be, you know, me speculating, but there's a good chance those two things are interconnected and, and are relevant to each other. So again, please share your thoughts, you know, down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. This is something that should be a lot of a, it should be a bigger deal than what it actually is, is what I'm trying to say, because, you know, you've got so many things happening within the hobby, but something like this, the benefit of something like this happening gives the hobby so much more integrity and transparency that, you know, the average person probably won't understand that because, you know, if this is done right, then it can, you know, put the loaded box stuff to bed to an extent, right? Could that stuff still happen? 100% it could still happen, but it's good at least they're looking into it. I really hope that once, you know, they do release it, which I hope they do, it actually is transparent. It does give us clarity and it's not something that's just, you know, ticking a box to try and move on. I really hope it's been done correctly. I really hope it's been detailed and I really hope it's not just a review because, you know, it is something that could, you know, really solve some of the problems that we're seeing within this industry. So again, as always, thank you for watching, share your thoughts, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.